Yes, hello. Hello, welcome to the second session of Ignite Talks. Were you here yesterday at the Ignite Talks? Yes. Uh, they were fun, and here, here we've got a fantastic pack of six. Yeah, no, it's amazing presentations. We're going to have a lot of fun. The thing is, um, they will talk for five minutes, 20 slides. They do not control the presentation. And after that, we have um, like a 20 minute talk. So you can come here on the stage and just ask the presenters. So first one, Alberto. It's, it's something sadic, you say, uh, sadistic, you say something that. <laughs> It's not so fun. It's like being, you know, when you have to go kick someone on a ring in boxing, you know. Okay. Um, uh, um, th this uh, Ignite talk, I'm going to illustrate, illustrate the experience of the Italian Scratch Festival, a Scratch programming contest between uh, kids of the first two years of, uh, uh, of high school in Italy. Um, the purpose of the contest is to promote the use of Scratch programming in school teaching Scratch in school, okay? Um, the, the, the Italian Scratch Festival contest was organized by two uh, associations. The first one is called Discola, a non-cultural profit organization founded in 2004. The founding members are some school in uh, Piemonte Valle d'Aosta, totally 20 schools. Uh, Discola, uh, I belong to this association, um, uh, has a purpose uh, to promote the enhancement of the school's information technology, culture, educational innovation, and the sharing of knowledge through ICT. In addition, Discola provides initiatives to support schools in the use of the ICT technologies. The other organizer of, uh, of the Italian Scratch Festival contest is CSP, Innovation in the IC. ICT is a consortium of non-profit uh, companies consisting of public administrations, uh, university and delegates from the entrepreneurial world. CSP participates in various projects for school. Uh, in 2010, we had in Italy a, a, a big reform of the secondary school, okay? And uh, there was introduction in, of computer science basic skill in problem solving, programming foundation, concepts of algorithm. So we started a debate about the curriculum, not only European Computer Driving License Office and Open Office, but starting from the first year, basic programming concept, lab activities with the use of programming language. So what we do, we decided as a discola, as school, uh, to, as a net of school to propose the use of Scratch, Scratch for Arduino App Inventor. A cat, a king, Arduino in a legend was a king of Piemonte, and a robot, okay? Um, now we are going to the core of the Ignite talk. Scratch Day, what is Scratch Day? Is a, an, a very, very fun uh, initiative launched by the creators of Scratch in order to bring together from all over the world Scratch enthusiasm uh, with uh, uh, meeting and round tables. In 2013, 186 events were organized in 46 counties around the world. Okay, we are there in Italy, north of Italy, northwest of Italy. Uh, um, as a school, uh, my school, Vallauri Institute, is, one, is a big school, is one of the founding schools of the association Discola. And we decided in 2011 to organize a Vallauri Scratch Day, in occasion on the Scratch Day, a contest held within uh, the school for students in the introductory classes of the technology sector, with the aim of promoting the study of computer programming by rewarding the best projects developed using Scratch. Um, 30 students participated. <laughs> okay, good. This is the uh, award ceremony of the first uh, 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 Balauri Sketch Day. Okay, and as a result of the experience, we decided to organize a national contest. Okay, in 2012, we had the first edition of the Italian Scratch Festival Contest, and 24 high schools from all over Italy participated uh, to the competition. Uh, this year, in May, okay, so two months ago, we organized the second edition of the Italian Scratch Festival. 33 high schools from all over Italy were participating. Uh, um, each school 
could uh, present, uh, could participate with uh, this, uh, this list of some of the schools, with the three different projects, okay? And the organization is selecting 10 projects. Uh, the students are invited to uh, Torino, where, where, to the main event, and uh, there is a, they can present the project in front of a big audience. There is a jury, this is the evaluation criteria, technical quality, usability, originality, and aesthetic quality. Uh, at the jury are participating ICT experts, university, entrepreneur uh, of the world of video games, uh, and um, they are selecting the best project. This is the list of the five winners of uh, this edition of uh, Italian Scratch, Fe Scratch Festival from Torino, from Naples, from all over Italy. If you want to know more, we posted, uh, there are different videos on YouTube, but two are official, okay, with all the, all the, the day going on, so you can see uh, the expert uh, talking and also the kids talking, 15 years old kids in front of a big audience presenting. And this is the screenshot of one of the, one of the winners, our a very good project uh, made in scratch is a story where you have to defend uh, people and you have to follow instruction of a computer that is saving the world but at the end of the story is the computer who is want to destroy the world it's just kind of crazy and this is the winner of two years ago arena space battle uh, a star wars game and very very fast so the kids uh, love it and and um, and nothing thank you very much no, to everybody not to frank <laughs> Thank you very much. John, it's your turn. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm John Mustillo from Basque Country University, and I want to share, I want to share uh, with you some research I did using Scratch. First, I meet with Scratch. Sorry. Oh. Reset. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, yeah. Okay. So, uh, mm, first, I meet uh, with Scratch, reading some articles from uh, Long, Line, uh, Long Life Kindergarten Research uh, Group. So, uh, then I perceive participated in a Scratch workshop where it was explained that Scratch could help to improve creativity. And creative thinking uh, is one of the most uh, important skills for the citizens of the 21st century. But the educational system today uh, doesn't develop it. So it destroyed. So can Scratch really help to improve creativity? I tried to find answer by different uh, means, uh, using internet, uh, printed materials, and also I talked with people from a Scratch community. Eventually, I decided to conduct new research on this uh, subject. Having decided on the subject of my research, the next step was to develop a plan. And the first part was to define a good environment for the research. Uh, what should this be? A place where people are highly controlled, with no free access to multimedia, and with few opportunities to be creative. A prison, a good environment for the research only. What interested me was not only measuring the creative thinking, but also I wanted to know what, what would be the thinking process for learning Scratch. So I designed an educational ethnography in which I was a participative researcher. Sixteen prisoners decided to participate voluntarily in the research, but only 20% believed they could design a video game. I designed a workshop which spanned 25 days, normally more than two hours per day. We start working with Scratch and agreed with them to have an excavation day in the prison. The first part of this process was for me to demonstrate it 
video games I designed. The second stage was for us to design video games together. And the last stage was to design their own video games. All information I collected was not only from different uh, data collection instruments, but also from different reporters. And this is an important question. About the results, 80% rated the experience of working with Scratch as very good. They really enjoy it, yeah. 81% continued thinking about improving their video games after the class had finished. They had engaged with their Scratch creations. Uh, prison psychologists and educators reported that prisoners showed different thinking patterns. In fact, the behavior changed adapting better to the situation. The gap between what they wanted to happen in their video games and what really happens showed mistakes that are a powerful learning opportunity. This is a scratch. I found also a statistically significant increase in the creative thinking. It improved by 85%. So, in conclusion, I can now say that having worked with Scratch, it, ha it can has a positive influence over creativity. The mistakes become a learning opportunity, and designing video games can engage people from all parts of society. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for listening to me. Uh, if you are interested uh, to learn more, I will be very happy to meet you afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> now it's Genevieve, it's your turn. Okay. Hi, I'm Genevieve, and um, a lot of people keep asking me, um, yes, I do need a stick, it's not for fashion, and, um, but it is fashionable as uh, my son picked it, and it's uh, his Minecraft stick, apparently. So yeah, um, yeah. Um, basically, uh, my talk is in regards to teaching six-year-olds, which is grade two, how to use computer science and programming. And the challenge was um, that I knew quite a lot of primary school teachers didn't really have the time or the space or the money to actually learn new programming skills. So at the, at the time when I did this in 2011, my son was also in the same grade but in a different school. So he um, was doing lots of kind of games, um, learning games, they're really good, and kind of mouse control and things like that. And his report came back with, um, He's not very good at ICT, and in our house, my husband's a programmer and I teach computer science. And I thought, mm, that can't be right. Um, so I spoke to some of the teachers and said, well, what are you doing? And they said, well, actually, what we want to do is to be able to teach kids to code, but we don't have any spare time or capacity. So I met up with three teachers from uh, these primary schools um, in, the UK, in the UK in Brighton and developed three different uh, programs for them, one for animation, one for kind of Lego Redo, and one for gaming and they um, wanted them for different purposes. One was for storytelling, and we basically developed a program for animation looking at storytelling, and this is the student's code that you can see behind me. And we went through the program, which was six to eight weeks, and instead of teaching the teacher, I went and actually delivered the lessons in the, in the classroom. So I taught the six to eight weeks. Each lesson was an hour long, and the teacher learned alongside. And what they said about using um, that method was that they had a time to actually observe their class from a different perspective. They were also able to learn over six to eight weeks, the kind of time that it needs to take for you to feel relaxed about things. <laughs> and I was there as the expert, so to say, um, and asked lots of different questions and challenged them. Because one of the things that you need in Scratch is negative numbers. 
They don't learn negative numbers, apparently, until year three. I didn't know that. Um, so we're looking at coordinates and negative numbers. And so it's quite a challenge um, from their perspective um, to actually look at the Scratch environment and see how powerful it was for them. And then we went on to the Lego, D Lego Redo one. And you can see here the kind of things that we, we talked about was we actually used the terminology loop, conditional statement, algorithm. We were asked by the teachers, or I was asked by the teachers, not to modify my language. So if I use the word algorithm, I would use the word algorithm with my grade two class. And they were able to actually understand it by using different methodologies of learning. So the Makaton, the kind of animated kind of learning. So they did lots of different creative um, um, activities to learn these keywords. Um, I developed a student workbook and a teacher's workbook, which is available to anyone. And we used the actual um, comment coding, the comment block, to actually have the instructions in there. The only thing we wish was that you could actually enlarge the font, which you can't. <laughs> um, as you can see here, this is a, an example of one of the teacher's workbooks. So it's very laid out for them to be able to actually deliver this again. Because a lot of the time, they'll have one ICT coordinator for the, whole for the whole primary school, which is like three to four years. And they have to provide this information for their other teachers. So I did that for them. There's also a student workbook. And there's one for each one of the courses that we did. Um, this is now used in a lot of the schools across Brighton. And uh, as of September, we're all working together. And we're going to embed it across all the schools in Brighton and Hove for this year group. And these are the teachers' details if you actually want to get in touch with each of theirs. Um, they also have, uh, they're quite collaborative in terms of how they work. Um, so they share lots of different ideas across the different primary schools, which is quite unusual because that doesn't happen in the secondary schools um, as much. So f this was two years ago. So from there now, they've been doing this for um, two years and they actually have now developed and built it into their curriculums in their schools. So, and they also have now taken it across to other subjects. So they now use Scratch in maths, in history. Um, it was really good for one of them, did it as a collaborative project at the end of the year, which was really nice. So but thank you very much, and um, I look forward to hearing your questions. Thank you very much. Next presenter is, you still have got five seconds to talk. Five, come on. <laughs> oh, Jenny. I'm very happy that Jenny is here, um, I have to say that, because we have been translating Scratch into Catalan from the since very beginning, so it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Well, for me it's uh, a pleasure also uh, too, because uh, it's the opportunity to uh, talk in front of the, uh, all of you, the international people. Uh, I'm not uh, really sure with my English, and I hope you can understand. Uh, well, my name is Eugenie Catalan. I am spreading the Scratch world since 2008, and I am the founder of Scratch Catalan, as you could see in my t-shirts, okay? <laughs> well, this situation is uh, so much uh, familiar for all of you uh, when you are coding, no? What I'm doing wrong, what the cat don't do what they say. Most people think, if I close and open again, or if I do again, or maybe these little bits will solve. Believe me, I never seen these bits. Well, let me think. Uh, after three beers, I saw something. No, no. Well, the other uh, opportunity is to call friends who don't have a computer guy in his agenda. Put your hands up, if not. Oh, there are one, one girl there. Well, I, I meet, I meet uh, with someone here uh, after. Well, try to not to, uh, to get nervous. Your computer is so expensive. And uh, you will try to get a lot of pieces uh, off the floor. Well, Scratch Ref is the best uh, tool to to develop because you can use at the same time you are developing your, your projects with the Scratch. A scratch, you know, this uh, the, the user interface in your computer. Well, now there are the there is the the, the, the second uh, version. Uh, a scratch ref use the same user interface. 
You don't have to learn nothing. You know it. Okay? The, the same user interface for uh, learning what to, you can do. The only thing you need is your finger. Okay? Everyone has at least 10 fingers. Uh, and you can swipe right or left to, to see all the interface and click inside the red information circles to, uh, a lot, to explain very well the, the other things. Uh, there are a, a block palette like the, the same in the, in the Scratch uh, PC version and you can uh, tap in, in one category to show all the blocks of that category. In this case, the control blocks. This is the easiest way if you are looking for something but you are not uh, sure what you, do you want. The other thing, uh, the other way is to search using uh, keywords. Okay? Uh, well, in this case, which, are, uh, which, wor uh, which blocks are related with colors? Do you know how much? Well, here are the result list. Okay? When uh, you are sure which is the block you are uh, requesting, you only have to tap inside and uh, a scroll, uh, a screen scroll, uh, a scroll screen, I'm sorry, uh, with a, a detailed explanation shows you, okay? There are a possibility to play a video about the, uh, the thing. Let's see an example. Can you develop at that speed? Okay, there are more than 150 video tutorials explaining in deep uh, how to use every block and how to work with the user interface. Um, but uh, Scratch Ref not only explains the blocks, it explains also the user interface like the uh, scripts area, costumes area, etc. Okay. Also, the menus and submenus are explained in detail. In a screen, in a navigation screen, you can uh, select it what you want, okay? And, uh, for example, the menu options also explain it in detail in that screen, uh, scroll screens, to show what you can do, okay? Um, well, uh, finally, for this special event, Scratch Ref is free during three days conference. You can download from the App Store and the iTunes and, uh, well, enjoy it. And don't uh, uh, speak the word about it. And, well, thanks and Forza Scratch. That is how we say Scratch on in Catalan. And if you want to contact me, you can use what, uh, well, all of these uh, services. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's my turn. Actually, I'm going to be really good to the audience and go to this side of the room. <laughs> no discrimination. Go. My name is Mags. I've called it Scratching at the Crossroads. I'm from Ireland, and we are at a crossroads in computer education in Ireland. I'm at a crossroads in, in my life in terms of education and computers. and. My motto is, it's all about the why, it's not about the how, but Scratch is part of the crossroads. That's where I teach. It's on the border between the UK and Ireland. These are my tribes. I volunteer for Coder Dojo. That's my beautiful school that I work in. Twitter is where I get all my professional development. I'm giving up on everywhere else. They're my beautiful girls that I teach, and this is my big crossroads, and now I teach little ones. I have to really rearrange my mind to teach students of the age that, that you're used to. And my biggest tribe at the moment is Ceci, I'll tell you about that. There's a man called Ian Smith, he died last November and everybody who knew him is very sad and he introduced me to an epiphany, a crossroad in my teaching life. And he said, if you take the relationship with your students and cross it with the responsibility that you give the students for their own learning, you end up with four climates, four climate types. Now let's ignore the stormy classroom where the relationships are bad and the cold classroom where the relationships are bad. Where I found I was teaching with my girls all the time because they wanted to be perfect 
was in a humid classroom where we all loved each other. I loved them and they loved me and it was great. But I was doing all the work and they had no responsibility for their own learning. And this is where Scratch came in and brought us to the sunny classroom that we have now. You know, I, I just said go. I'm not going to show and tell. Go do. Now, Scratch isn't the start of where we start. We do computational thinking as a pilot subject in our school. And Scratch was kind of an add-on, sorry, Karen. But it has become a very important add-on to, to um, where we're working because it gives us the sunny classroom. It gives us the atmosphere where the children, the students, I shouldn't call them children, they're 18 years of age or 12, they, they are driving their own learning. They're doing something because they want to do it, not because I said they did it. Our country also works in second level within a key skills framework. And these are the five key skills that I am expected to instill in my students. And each of the five, I have found that Scratch can help me greatly with without overburdening me or tiring me out as a teacher. I'm a much less frazzled person since I began to think this way and let my students um, take responsibility for own, their own learning. The one I had a problem with, and this is where Scratch helped, was the key skill of working with others. A lot of the computational thinking um, work that we were doing to try and make the children knowledge able as opposed to knowledgeable, they were doing on their own. And I'm a natural, uh, oh sorry, Yoik, this one's for you. I know you love this slide. That's another epiphany. In our school, it was never seen as good to fail until they came into the computer lab and started to work with programming. Then failing was good, and like you have said, they could, they could learn from it. My problem was, I'm a cooperative learning teacher. I have, you know, all, all my life been working with David and Roger Johnson in my head, and I only really like the classroom, and I'm only comfortable when the students are working in cooperative groups and we're trying to, you know, follow our five basic tenets of cooperative learning. So when I started to teach computational thinking and got worried because there were 24 to 28 students working on their own at separate computers, I kind of think I'm breaking my own rules here. So I'm just waiting for the, there's a, I'm going too fast, Frank. I only had four slides. He made me do decomposition and break them down. But these are my, these are kind of the introductory computational thinking exercises I would use with the children. The students, the ones they absolutely really freak out for is the, re the, re the reconfigured Google Blockly maze. Whatever Neil Fraser has done with it, it has, it's gone into levels and it is fantastic. But where I can marry the two, my computational thinking love and my cooperative learning love, is with Scratch. When we've gone through these lonely cases here, they all move into Scratch work together. And my other big epiphany in Crossroads is now my teenagers who learn Scratch with me in school turn up and walk in to Coder Dojo on a Saturday afternoon and say, can we help? So my 16-year-olds come in to teach my 8-year-olds. And I am so, that, that's the best ever. Also, it's an all-girls school. There's always knitting in the room. We keep some knitting because it's the best way to teach about coding and debugging. And there's my DNA scarf with a big mistake. And they love to find the mistake and work it out and work on the code. That's me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, we will need to have the video there. Thank you for our last Ignite talk. What are you doing? Whoop. Come on. Presentation here. <laughs> so maybe we... <laughs> no, I was not. <laughs> maybe we can just stand up and go. Just to see it. Okay, so I'm Andrew, uh, this is Sam and this is Tom, and we're from Technology Volunteers, a group at the University of Warwick in the UK, and we're going to try and show you two things in this crazy presentation. The first thing, that it's easy to create a scratch sensor, like the sort that you may have seen in Margaret's workshop yesterday, but also a really fun way of literally walking people through code. Okay, so um, we're going to make a, a simple dance mat. Um, it's made out of four pressure sensors. Uh, we use the Pico board's resistance value. We've got some um, 
plasticky type mats to use and some ribbon cable. Okay, so let's just basically plugging it in. Um, very simple, either way around will do. Um, yeah, pretty easy to do. Well, kids won't have any problem with that. Um. Okay, so we hopefully should have the, um, the cat moving in a second. And then we need to work on our mouse. And what we want with our mouse is we want it to do something whenever it touches the cheese or the cat. Back to the sensor. Okay, so now you want to tape it down. Um, you want to make sure that the the sensors are quite um, near the center center of the mat, um, so it, it works much better. So here's a hint on the board for anyone. So we want something to happen when the um, cat touches the cheese or the mouse. Okay, so using these, just putting them together. Oh, and it's worth noting that these these are easy to get hold of from any kid's shop. You will quite easily have these. All the other parts you easily get off uh, online, so they're quite easy to get. So what we should hopefully have happening in a minute after the frantic sticking of the code is that the um, the mouse actually changes costume when it hits the cat and stops the program, and when it hits the cheese, it also stops the program. Yeah, we're getting there. Um, <laughs> um, so we've got some ribbon cable and some. Uh, it, it comes out in a plug. We just plug them in. Um, the fault, if there's any problems, we tend to find the fault is at the crocodile clips or the pressure pads. So then with the last bit of code we've got to do is the heat board has four resistance connectors. Um, so we need to put these in so that when you press down on the dance mat, it goes in the right direction. Um, so that's the third bit of code to the left of the board. That yeah, so it's just about to get in there. <laughs> so Tom's just going to connect the pressure sensors on the bottom. And now over to Andrew. Okay, so I think we uh, overestimated where we think uh, everyone will be by now, but just give them a second to catch up. So we. We came up with this after going in and volunteering at schools and we found that kids absolutely love Scratch, so inspired by Scratch. But the one thing that we found that sometimes they didn't necessarily um, appreciate that Scratch is just a sequence of instructions, just running very fast. And we loved the idea of getting people to the front of the classroom, getting them working in small teams because for us, um, we are computer scientists, we go in and we look at you know, taking a big, a big problem, splitting it up, and how you can get the ideas of working as a team and being able to take your big problem, making this ambitious game, and splitting it up into three individual parts that can then be done by three individual groups. Um, sorry to the volunteers who had to do all of them. But, um, and to, to break it up and then to be able to work through it and run it through as a class. So in a second, we are planning. We knew this was ambitious in the planning. <laughs> it was very ambitious. So the idea is that we're going to work through the code in the last 45 seconds. And we're going to make our three volunteers, who have already gone through enough, the scratch cat, the cheese, and the mouse for the game. And the idea is to work through with the class, to go through each block line by line that they've just worked on and walk through it with the class. Have someone as the mouse, get them really involved and say, OK, well now we're going to this point, now we're moving through the code and getting it interactive at the front of the class. Now we've run out of time, so we didn't get a chance to do that. But if anyone wants to come and stay at the end, I'm sure we'll be happy to give you a private demonstration. Or maybe we'll just carry on going and seeing if anyone kicks us out of the room. You're cool? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to run through it quickly. Thank you for the extension. Um, so, <laughs> to start off with them, if we, if we do the one on the left then, um, that would start with the green flag, and Tom is going to be on the dance mat, um, sort of, 
talking through. So when Tom um, steps forward on the dance mat, for example, our program is going through. We've already moved our, the first line. This is the cat, this script. Oh, sorry, actually, this script is for the mouse. Who's the mouse? Okay. So we've now got our mouse to go to a position of the classroom. And then we can talk through, going through this, it's continuously checking to see the values of these um, resistance. So when Tom, say, steps forward on the dance mat, this will be above zero, and you would change x by 10, and in this case, move one, move a bit to the right. So the idea is to go through it step by step. And this also lets you debug code as a class. This was the other thing that we found. And that you might have noticed on the slides there was a bit of a mistake where we had A, B, B, B for the resistances. A common mistake. And by going through this, you can clearly see as you're stepping through, hold on, why, why, are they, why do you keep stepping in one direction? What's wrong with the program? And as a class, you can all stand there and, and work it out. So sorry we couldn't give you a complete demonstration, but I think that would definitely take quite a bit more than five minutes. But thank you so much for listening. And if you've got any questions, come and speak to us at the end. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Whoop. Let's move that. Okay, now, so we've got uh, uh, 15 minutes, 20, 15 minutes. Um, so I will ask the speakers to come uh, again. Uh, no, no, don't help me. Don't help me. No. <laughs> so, questions, if, please. Stand up, come in front, ask questions or whatever you want to tell to our presenters. I would only ask you a big round of applause again for them because they did a fantastic job. Thank you, thank you very much.